Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we doing? Today, <laughs> our topic is Yamhill Valley Peacemakers, and I've got with me Liz Stein. Welcome, Hi, Howie. Liz. Thank you. Kathy Beckwith. Yeah, Howie. Nice to have you with us. Mark Davis, Thanks, nice to have Howie. you with us. So um, we're going to go right into the questions. Um, so Mark, who founded Yamhill Valley Pe Peacemakers and when? Peacemakers were founded by a couple, Vern and Rosemary Cooperider, who moved to McMinnville around 1980. Um, they were members of the First Baptist Church here in McMinnville, started a peace group, and decided they wanted to expand it into the wider community. And that's how McMinnville Peacemakers were originally started. And now it's become Yamhill Valley Peacemakers. Yes. About uh, seven years later, the group decided that they wanted a more ecosystem-wide uh, name and <laughs> decided to change the name to Yamhill Valley Peacemakers to be a little more inclusive. That's awesome. So is Yamhill Valley Peacemakers a nonprofit organization? Yes, Vernon Rosemary um, filled out the incorporation papers with the uh, state of Oregon in 1982 we're, and with the federal government also. We're a 501c4 for anybody who cares about those sort of <laughs> IRS designations. <laughs> so will you tell us about some of the Yamhill Valley Peacemakers history mark? Well, boy, that probably should involve several people, but well, I can I'll, give, I'll yeah. give a, a, a brief overview. Through the 80s, there was a lot of concern about nuclear weapons. Yeah. And so the peacemakers were very involved in the nuclear weapons freeze movement. There was also a great deal of concern about U.S. involvement in Central America, especially El Salvador and Nicaragua, and the peacemakers were active there. There were, you know, several other issues. And, and through the years, the peacemakers have, have worked on, you know, whatever people really wanted to, to work on. There was never, a, you know, a set agenda or anybody telling us. We've always been a locally run group, and the members kind of decided what they thought was important to do. So how many years have the Yamhill Valley Peacemakers now been going, Mark? Um, well, if you go from 1980, I guess, if I can still do math in my head, that's about, uh, what, uh, 37, 37 years. years. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's ebbed and flowed over the years. You know, the, when, when there's war has threatened or been ongoing, I think the peacemakers have been more active. There's been other times where it's been a little less active. But the group has, you know, stayed involved and met at least once a year, sometimes, you know, once a week, depending on, you know, the times and, and what people wanted to do. There was never, we've never had paid staff or anything like that. So it's always really been driven by community interest and, and their willingness to do things. And volunteerism. A absolutely. So, Andrew, would you please bring up the Facebook banner? So Yamhill Valley Peacemakers now has a Facebook page, and if you would bring up the logo for that as well. And there's the logo that resides on the Yamhill Valley Peacemakers uh, Facebook page today. Um, so Kathy, um, what are some of the accomplishments of the M. Hill Valley Peacemakers over the years? Well, I think one of the <coughs> most important things for me personally was, well, first of all, it was just entering into a whole new world that I hadn't been a part of. Um, it was during one Turkey Rama that I was walking down 3rd Street in McMinnville and someone handed me a brochure for McMinnville Peacemakers. And it wasn't my life. I didn't, I hadn't been active in anything. I, I had rarely um, even, hardly even kept up on things, I right. think. And yet it seemed something important. And about that time, I think they were doing an emphasis on uh, some specific skills in conflict resolution. Mm. Uh, they hosted a a day-long workshop on conflict resolution skills at one of the churches here in town. We had three young kids at that time and um, uh, we put on, well, they got us in touch with uh, Families for Peace and Justice, uh, some classes that were happening in Portland, but then we, in, through our own peacemaking organization, 
put on a weekend retreat over at the coast for families that was you know a lot of kids there and it was just geared for kids being exposed to you know ideas of peacemaking and being around other adults who believed in peacemaking and for for me it was that feeling of not only will I be nurtured in learning more and having opportunities for being active but my kids will have role models and people who have skills that they will admire and um, that was a very significant thing and they'll carry it forward I think so <laughs> they are <laughs> and let's go back to conflict resolution just for a moment you've written an incredible book about that very topic and about war thanks um, yeah the I did work in in curriculum and actually that came from um, Yamhill Valley Peacemakers too. At one of our meetings, someone uh, mentioned that we were starting a mediation group here in Yamhill County. Yeah, Yamhill County Mediators, and now it's your community Medi mediators. mediators of Yamhill County. Mm -hmm. And so that, I mean, maybe I would have heard about it otherwise, you know, but I heard about it through this organization, became a mediator, and then that sparked interest in getting mediation into the schools. And I worked on, um, because you can't just start a mediation program. Uh, we had to have more conflict resolution background for right. that, I thought. So I did a curriculum guide on conflict resolution. And then it seemed like there was more needed, and I began to delve into America's study of war. America's habit of war and did a study of, of the story and uh, recently have published um, A Mighty Case Against War, what America missed in U.S. history class and what we all can do now. So I'm going to come over to you, Liz, mm -hmm. and ask you the same question. What are some of the accomplishments of the Yamhill Valley Peacemakers over the years? Uh, I. I think one of the greatest accomplishments has been being out there in public, letting people know that we exist, you know, right. through our, um, through the, you know, standing up for peace on the corner of, you know, by the, um, by the police station. Um, Before it was even there. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and, um, and having other visible activities like um, when we set out flags in our local cemetery here to indicate just how many deaths in Afghanistan there were in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, and then we would have a banner showing how many that was, um, and um, and then the piece of music. Right. Uh, you know, we we've had we've tried to have activities that would include the whole community. Um, you and know, we and collaborate with a lot of people right, too. Right, you know. Would with, you like to talk about that? Well, you know, um, during, during the, uh, when President Bush was in there and, uh, um, and the, the, w the Bush. And, and, <laughs> and the Republicans coined the, you know, God is, on our side kind of thing you know the whole God phrase that's when the um, the interfaith advocates for peace with justice that's when they formed and wanted people to know that that God was with us too right you know and and so the Yamhill Valley peacemakers would work with them we I mean we would participate with them on each year they would have a march, a peace march. Right, and, and they had a peace fair and, and a peace walk and all right, of those things. And right, you know, I mean, it, it's just so important for people to see that, that there's another way. And, um, and you, you know, I mean, just the, when, when at our community center, when we, were, when we would show the, the boots we had, we were uh, working with um, the AF, SC, uh, the American, American Friends Service Friends Committee, Service Committee <coughs> and, uh, and wanted the public to see just how many of our Oregon soldiers were, were killed in the war. And, and not only that, but there were, 
we, we had small shoes too to right. indicate the, the children that. So let's that go to that photograph, Andrew, if you would. Bring that Boots photograph up, please. So talk about that for a second, Liz. Yeah, so it, it, was, it, it was just a, a really clear indication to people just how, how the impact that the war had on, on Oregon families. And, and for and every names. set of those boots, someone died. And, and there would be a name on each set of boots. And, and then in the perimeter, there would be uh, posters that would show other aspects of the war. And the thing that impacted me the most probably was seeing the little shoes and how many, how many young children, uh, Iraqi children, mm -hmm. were, uh, uh, you know, suffered and died, you know, that each, each pair of shoes represented so many children and you know and we we have an account of of how many of our own people died but did we really think about how it impacted civilian populations right. wherever it was occurring exactly and so that that was really big to me so mark would you like to jump in and talk about some of the other accomplishments that Thank you, Howie. Um, I, I guess I'd like to mention the early days because I was around then. But back in the 80s um, and the 90s, there were we would regularly have informational meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that in, in those days it was uh, pre PowerPoint, so people had slideshows or actually just came and talked, if you can imagine that, without any <gasps> high tech gizmos. <laughs> but all sorts of topics and in, in that era there was actually a group of people that were often related with American Friends Service Committee or Fellowship of Reconciliation or uh, Citizens Action for Lasting c c Security, various um, peace and social justice groups around the state that would have speakers or they would contact nationally known people that would come around and then people would come and, and speak to us and we would, you know, we just advertise it in the Peacemakers newsletter. So I thought that was a really powerful thing to do. And, and I, I especially remember this one. There wasn't a big turnout, but we had someone come and talk about Iraq and Iran back in the mid 80s. This was when they were having a horrible war there. This was before even George Bush President George Bush the first, H.W. Bush. So this was, you know, before we got involved at all. And right. the description of what was going on there was, I mean, it was shocking. And, you know, later led to some of what we got entangled in, but most Americans had no idea of what was going on at the time, although though we were actually supporting the the Iraqis at that point, ironically. So this was pre-Desert Storm. Oh, yes. This yeah. was in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. Desert Storm was until the 90s, so... Um, you know, but the peacemakers have always been about education, but they've also been about action. And so, you know, we have been willing to stand on the street corner with signs and right. state our opinions. But I'd like to think that our opinions have been based on research and, you know, thinking about things for a while. It's not just a rash, let's go out and stand on the corner because we're upset sort of thing. So back in those days, that was pre-internet and, and um, no email. Right. And so <laughs> the peacemakers <laughs> newsletter was all important to receive in the mail to know what was going on. Absolutely. I mean, that was, uh, you know, the Peacemakers News, and we did have a phone tree. I mean, those were the two ways that we communicated with right. people. But I think a lot of people depended on that to know what was going on. So this is for all of you, and we'll, we'll go ahead and start this. Um, Andrew, if you would go to the next slide, please. What is this? I'll take that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I see you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was something organized by uh, Linfield students. I can't remember the name of the group. The Lin we've worked with Linfield students over the years, and they they and they had a whole program over a weekend about environmental you know issues, and that was they decided they wanted to have a march too, and so we marched around campus carrying an earth, and I think that was a polar bear there and mm -hmm. and so it was a uh, but they were very interested in you know there it was a whole you know teach-in kind of thing at the university and then right. it ended with this this walk awesome mm -hmm. so um 
The next thing we're going to talk about, and it's going to go, the pictures are going to go along with this, is St. James Cemetery and the flag plantings on Memorial Day weekend. And um, if you would bring those up, uh, Andrew. So any of you that want to join in, go ahead. Well, I, I think that as the project finished, it became um, amazing to people driving past there uh, to see all the flags that represented a death that had happened to American soldiers um, in, in Iraq and, and Af Afghanistan. Afghanistan. But I have to say, too, that lining up with other people and, and walking forward and planting that flag right. that, that signified a death was a very moving experience for me, too, to realize what it to Andrew, if you would stay happened. there just for a moment, please. Would you read that one, Kathy? Remember them. Afghan, Iraq war, 5,400 plus. So 2001 through whatever time that was. Mm -hmm. So we stopped doing it around 2010. But if you would go to the next slide, please. Liz, would you read that one, please? Uh, remember them. This was 2003. Yep. So it was Iraq War, 3,400 plus. And it just kept growing. I don't know if we had any more room. <laughs> we ran out of room, that's for sure, when yeah. we were doing the flag plantings. Mm -hmm. Go ahead to the next one, Andrew. Would you uh, describe why the Oregon flags are there, please? So the Oregon flags represented the, um, the men and women in Oregon who, who life, whose lives were uh, lost. And, uh, and it was really awesome how we would name them. We would take time to name each one of them throughout the, the ceremony. Um, yeah. And most of the time, Ellie Gunn did those mm -hmm. names, and mm -hmm. she did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, if you would move on to the next slide, Andrew. OK, I'm going to take this one. So back in 2009, we decided that we wanted to do a concert. And, and we termed it Peace Through Music. And then in May of 2010, we actually did the concert. And we had about 12 to 13 different entertainment acts that all uh, came up and gave free of their time um, to play for everyone that attended. Um, I believe that the donations that we took in went to Give a Little Foundation. Is that correct? Does anybody remember? Mm. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's like at least they're one of them. Yes. <laughs> so um, it was at the <laughs> Grand Ballroom, and it was on uh, Sunday, May 23rd of 2010. And I wrote a song for the Peacemakers group and donated that song to all of you called The Light of Peace. You and should play it. I, I can't, I'm <laughs> going to play it tonight at our get together, right, but right. not here today. <laughs> um, I played it on many a show in the past. Mm. So. All right, good. Um, and it is a song that I think we are taking as a theme song. I mm -hmm. mean, just that mm -hmm. it, it seems to have happened spontaneously. Mm -hmm. But because it speaks of the things that we're pushing against, mm -hmm. as well as the things that we're moving toward, right. and includes everyone, and is a beautiful song, I think it's something Thank that you we could. Thank Oh, yeah. it was my honor to write the song, number one, and, and, and then to give it to you guys um, over these years. Now it's been seven years. Mm -hmm. And recruited, and recruited a choir. And recruited many a choir <laughs> at you. many a function to sing it along <laughs> with. It's fantastic. Yeah. So the next um, photograph is, I believe, the Peace Poll. Andrew, if you would go to that, please. So any of you that would like to describe that one? Uh... I wasn't able to be there. Who was there? I was there. It was it was part of the interfaith uh, peace and social justice mm. um, group, and they it was they, I think it was either the start or the conclusion of one of the walks that they had in the community. And that well, I see some really familiar faces <laughs> back there, <laughs> including Mary Stern, yeah. mm -hmm. and I assume that that peace poll is from St. Barnabas. 
Uh, uh, no, that one is at uh, Co-op Ministries. Co oh, yeah. okay. Very good. Corner of second and... Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we're going to walk through some visual photographs that were done um, at the corner of uh, uh, Adams and 2nd Street where the new police department resides. So, anyone want to hmm. join in? Interesting. What year would that have been? Hard to know. Yeah. So many photographs, so little time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, didn't we meet like every week? Didn't we? Yes. There, Each there Sunday? were different schedules for for when we can when we met. But there was a regular vigil at that corner for probably eight years. And this and was during the uh, Iraqi and Afghan yes. conflicts. <laughs> and it's amazing how many people would say after we didn't meet there, um, they would say, where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, if you would go to the next one, please. And I just want to say that standing behind that no more war sign so boldly mm -hmm. uh, made me feel that I was a part of something much bigger than myself. I had my own signs. Mm -hmm. um, if war were not an option, we would find another way. Mm -hmm. And then for a long time, I have a picture, it's still in, you know, I at home, <laughs> um, of a girl from Iraq who drew a picture for school kids here mm -hmm. um, at age 13. And just holding her picture was what I wanted to say. These are real people. Right. Right. And uh, we need to be aware of that. But I think the strength that that very bold sign had in showing everyone, there are people who are questioning this war we're in and want you to stop and question with us. Well, it was great to see the responses from the different vehicles drive by. Um, some of them honked and thought it was fantastic. Other ones uh, held up a finger that I can't talk about. <laughs> but... Mm -hmm. For the most part, it and was positive. And we just positive. smiled. And yeah. Then. Well, I mean, it, it's, it involved people, which I thought was, I didn't mind whether people were for us or against us. They right. were noticing that something was going on, and you could see conversations starting in vehicles as people went by. And right. So I thought it was all to the good. Oh, it's Regardless all Regardless of whether they were for us it or against us. It was all them. good. Mm -hmm. And there would be kids up against the window staring at us as they, you know, came in that one line that turned right there, uh -huh. and I thought, there's going to be a conversation in that car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, Andrew, if you would bring mm -hmm. up the next slide, please. Anyone, is that Linfield, too? <laughs> no, that's that's up in, uh, that was Portland. one of the big marches in Portland. Okay. We, we went up there, so a little, little more uh, raucous events up there. But mm -hmm. <laughs> There's some f familiar faces there. Yeah, and that's the top of that girl from Iraq. That's her <laughs> sign. <coughs> mm -hmm. We're just tired of war, <laughs> aren't we? I think Isn't all of us way? are tired of war. Isn't there another way? There must be another way. Um, Andrew, if you'd bring that down, thank you. Um, so what are your hopes for the Yamhill Valley Peacemakers currently and also into the future. And this is for all of you. So we'll start with you, Liz. Um, my <laughs> hope is to involve more young people. I, I know that there are young people out there who believe in the message that we have. Uh, we're, we're reorganizing and, uh, and hoping to get our message out there so that they feel included. Uh, we'll there's more than just war that we need to yes you know to address uh, bullying in schools and um, civil rights yeah yeah you know there's a lot of voices that need to be heard and that's that's what we want to promote very good so. Kathy well I think Mark had mentioned right at the beginning that we since we are volunteer run and and since we determine what we want it's like Liz said we can take anything any subject and peacemaking is huge so um, I would want it to be a way that people come together and feel strength in community 
and enjoyment and fun. I mean, right. we very often have vegetarian potlucks that, <laughs> you know, are just a great time to get together and feel um, lifted up by people that have similar concerns. Uh, we are definitely in that period of transition now, seeing where where our future lies, what are the needs, what do people want. Um, for me right now, something that's really scary, and Mark mentioned it being a concern in the 80s, and I think we've just kind of been lulled into sleep or mm -hmm. numbness, is the whole thing of nuclear weaponry. Sure. Um, the Obama administration proposed, and it's still on, uh, a uh, modernization of our nuclear weapons and uh, to the cost of a trillion dollars and that I mean we can't even imagine what that is so th I mean that's something that people need to awaken to and get concerned about and if we even locally can start that and be a part of it spreading that's important bringing about an awareness of the situation right and would you like to talk about this I would this is this is a picture of my grandson and uh, it says because Earth's children deserve nothing less than our um, our utmost gift to them they are inheriting a pretty scary world I think well, with a lot of truth? things that aren't going very well and I just remember the day that this little boy, um, our washing machine is upstairs and it got off balance, you know, towels too much on one side and it started banging, banging, banging. And I was taking care of him so I grabbed him up and that was probably part of it and rushed upstairs to try to put it off balance. But he was so frightened by a washing machine off balance. And I thought, dear Sky. There are children in this world so frightened by so much more right. than washing machines that our government is doing to them. Let us, let me never help you live into that kind of world. Help me stand against that and do what I can. So not just this little boy, but I believe all of Earth's children deserve yes. nothing less than the work that we can do as peacemakers. So um, we have about a minute and a half left total. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Mark. Why is peace so important to you? Well, I think the concept of peace incorporates more than the traditional being against war. I mean, the peacemakers have always had a very broad uh, perspective. I mean, considering social justice as part of it right. and also environmental issues. In other words, you know, peace on earth means peace with the peace with the earth. Right. So we can't be destroying the earth and, and saying we're, we're peaceful. Okay. So I, I just think that, you know, that we have to have a broad perspective and, and a long-term perspective. I'd like to, you know, I've been doing this for 30 or 40 years and like to think that it's going to be successful in the next year or two, but I'm not that naive. I know that, you know, as long as I'm able to stand, I'll probably have to stand on some corner waving some kind of sign over <laughs> some sort of issue. But that's just life, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have a chance to, to try to, you know, leave a better world. So that's, that's what I'm into. So before we go to Kathy, I'd like to read the mission statement of the Amhill Valley Peacemakers, which is providing fellowship and a forum for the community that is committed to nonviolence, social justice, and good stewardship of the earth. Now I'll come to you, Kathy. Why is peace so important to you? Well, I think primarily because I feel it's fair. You know, um, if we live cruelly with destruction and violence we're not being fair to ourselves and to others but also i just see how good it is when um, school kids can learn to be mediators when families can learn how to have family meetings that was another gift that peacemakers gave me mm -hmm. that we still do that's been going on for decades in our family so it's it's a good way to live a way of continuing to learn and continuing to stand. Mm -hmm. Same question. Um, peace to me is the only thing over his, it, throughout history that has worked. You know, when you look at the difference between Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, they had different ways of 
accomplishing civil rights. And who do we celebrate? Right. Right? Very so. good. So that was my last question. Thank you, Liz. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Howie. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, Howie. Thank you for being on Speaking Frankly, and thank you for watching very much, viewers out there. And uh, we'll see you next week.